All right, well, we've been in a series here at Fountain of Life, and we've been uh, talking about blessed to be a blessing, and hopefully you realize that you have been blessed by the Lord, and you can be a blessing to others with your prayers, with the words that you speak with them. Sometimes your very presence is a blessing for them. And today we're going to kind of put a caboose on this series by talking on this subject, blessing the blessor. Now, we began this series by looking at just how blessed we are. How many of you know Jesus as your Savior today? Come on. If you know the Lord as your Savior, if you've been accepted Him, and, and your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, you know heaven is your home, you can guarantee you're blessed. Come on. You're blessed beyond belief if that's all the Lord ever has done for you. And, and I want you to know that God's blessing doesn't stop with just salvation, right? The one who gave his only son for us, the scripture says he'll freely give us all things. And, and he's blessed us with so many things in this world. Are, are you grateful for family? Who's grateful for family? Amen? Who's grateful for, for beautiful wives and faithful husbands and jobs and income and a nice warm bed to sleep in? We, we were out at the camp out last weekend and it was 36 degrees out there. Oh yeah, that first night was chilly. I'm thankful for a warm bed. Come on somebody. Amen. And how about children? How many of you know that children are a blessing? And what about grandchildren? I got some grandparents out there, I know. You know, they're the frosting on the cake, aren't they? Come on. And God's blessed so many with healing and strength and energy and wisdom. And, and we live in nice houses and we got great cars and, and, and elegant clothes and we eat great food. Is there anybody that's expecting to eat some great food this coming Thursday? All right. Amen. I know you're going to. Amen. And so I've got something else for everybody. I'm just keeping these guys so busy today. Amen. Can you, could you help me out, somebody? Sean, could you help me out here again? You're running today. I want you to give everybody a package of M&Ms. You don't get this in every church. Come on. I'm giving you this for a reason today, all right? Everybody gets a package of M&Ms. How many of you like M&Ms today? I do. I love M&Ms. You can eat them if you want to. Just don't hold them in your hand too long, all right? All right. Well, i got to tell you a little story today. One day, years ago... One of my sons came up and asked me for a dollar to go buy some candy. I'm not going to tell you his name, but I'll tell you his initials are D.M. Right, by the way, all my kids' initials are D.M. All right. So anyway, uh, I gave him some money for some candy, went down to the store, and got himself some M&Ms. All right. And so he came back. And so I said to him, I said, man, come on, you know, give your dad a couple of those. You want to know what he said? No. No. I said, come on, just one or two. No, they're mine. Can you imagine your child doing the very same thing? You know, there were some things at that moment that my son did not understand. First of all, he didn't understand that I was the one who bought them, and he wouldn't have got them if I wouldn't have given him the money, right? Second, he didn't understand my strength. I, I could have ripped them away and eaten every single one. Of course, I didn't do that, right? And third, he didn't understand how many M&Ms I could have bought him had he just treated me a little better, come on. I mean, I had a few dollars in my pocket and I got a credit card. I could have stocked him up with M&Ms forever, right? And so today, I want to talk to you about blessing the blessor. And so that day, I blessed one of my sons with some M&Ms and he didn't want to bless the blesser. But how many of you say, I want to bless the blesser today? Come on. I want to bless the blesser. And so I'm going to give you three different ways that you personally can bless God. How many of you know you can bless God? You can bless the very heart of God today. So I'm going to give you three ways and three attitudes that we need to have. And the first way is, number one, we bless the blesser when we return to say thank you. When we return to give thanks. Actually, it probably would have felt a lot different to me on that day if my son would have came back and at least said to me, Hey, Dad, thanks for the dollar. I got these M&Ms. I appreciate it. But uh, not that it was such a big deal, right? It was only a dollar, right? And candy doesn't cost much. But how many of you know it's nice when someone says thank you? How many of you like it when people say thank you? Come on. So the first attitude we've got to have in order to bless the one who has blessed us is 
great fullness. Let me read to you out of Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. This is what the word says. It says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And it was that as they went, they were cleansed. How many were cleansed? All of them, right? All ten of them got the blessing, right? And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a very small, quiet little voice. No, that's not what it says. With a loud voice, he glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Where are there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there, were there not any found who returned give to, glory, to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I love this story, and I love it especially at this season because it reminds me of blessing the blesser. In this biblical account, all ten were cleansed. All ten were healed from their leprosy. But only one in ten, and he was a Samaritan, came back to say thank you, to give glory to the God of heaven who had healed them. And do you know that it blesses God when you say thanks? Just like when your child tells you thank you for giving him something, it blesses God when you and I are grateful. It blesses the blesser when we have a grateful heart. I just wonder today, is there anybody here on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, and, and you came to church this morning, but this was your spirit. You said, you know, I didn't really come to get blessed because I've been so blessed already. God has done so much for me. He's saved me, delivered me, healed me. I'm so thankful for his many blessings. I just came to thank him. I just came to praise him. I just came to give him glory and honor because he's been so good to me. He picked me up out of the miry clay, put my feet on the rock, Christ Jesus. And let me tell you, I'm grateful. Is there any grateful people in the house? Now, one author came up with nine different reasons that have been, he suggested, why these nine different lepers did not return to give thanks. Let, let, let me give them for you, and they're kind of, kind of fanciful, but I think that you will recognize in all of them reasons why sometimes we don't think it's necessary uh, we don't, to, in, in our modern society to give thanks. The, one of the lepers said, well, I didn't know whether the cure was real or not. Another leper said, well, I wanted to see if it would last a couple of years before I said thank you. One said he would see later Jesus, see Jesus later, and then he would thank him. One decided he'd never really had leprosy. And then one said he would have gotten well anyway. One gave glory to the priest. And one said, oh, well, Jesus really didn't, must not have done much, because I think it was the walk that must have cured me. And one said, well, any rabbi could have done something like that. And one said, I was already improving anyhow. But how many of you know there was one? There was that one that said, you know something? If it wouldn't have been for Jesus, I'd been stuck back there in my leprosy, and I, for one, am grateful. He changed my life. I wonder, is there anybody here today that says, you know, I'm going to be that one. I'm going to be that one that says thank you. I'm going to be that one that is grateful, because let me tell you, without Jesus, my life would be different. Is there anybody that that's your testimony today? Without Jesus, my life would be different, but thank God, he walked into my life, and he picked me up, and he touched that's my life. Billy Graham, many years ago, was driving through a small southern town. He was stopped by a police officer, and he was charged with speeding. Hey, Jereen, could I get you to turn down the air in here, if you would? Oh, I see some people that are sweating, and I know it's not the conviction. All right. All right. Amen. Anyway, he was charged with speeding, and, in, and uh, you know, Billy Graham admitted, you know, his guilt. But he was told by the officer, man, you're going to have to appear in court. So he got there, and the judge asked, are you guilty or not guilty? Billy Graham pleaded guilty, and the judge replied, that'll be $10, a dollar for every mile you went over the limit. How many of you know this must have been a long time ago, right? 
He must have been a young man then. But suddenly the judge recognized who the, who the minister, this famous minister was. And he said, sir, he said, you have violated the law and the fine must be paid. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to pay it for you. He, the judge pulled out his wallet and he gave a $10 bill, attached it to the ticket. And he said, hey, listen, let me take you out and buy you a steak dinner. And that's what he did. And so Billy Graham, after having that experience, this is what he said about it. He said, that, my friend, is how God treats repentant sinners. Isn't that the truth? That's how God has treated you and me. Because the truth of it is, all of us have been guilty before God. There was a fine that needed to be paid. But thank God, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, He paid that fine on the cross. And it caused us to not have to pay it. And if that wasn't enough, He adopted us into His, into his family. Come on, somebody give the Lord praise today. Are you grateful for Jesus today? Let's just raise our hands for a moment. And give him thanks for all he's done. Let's just thank the Lord for who he is. All the blessings he's given us in 2019. Lord, we give you praise and thanksgiving for who you are. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 tells us, In everything give thanks. Amen. Because that's the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So obviously, thank, being thankful blesses the blesser. Amen. And you can do that. This week and every day with thanksgiving.